stuff for kids, say hi to kids, thank them for coming. Like at our show in Germany, I think the kids in Berlin that we just did, I think the kids were singing louder. Actually, our sound guy told us that they were singing uh, two, two dBs over the PA. Has it got scary at times, some of the correspondence that you've got from fans? Because obviously some fans will cross the line. It hasn't, I, I wouldn't say that it's gotten scary. We've had some fans who've had some really, um, like, for example, a good example is uh, we had a fan who had, like, brain surgery, and they decided to play the, the song, I mean, the, the album, the entire way through and it was hours, hours. long yeah. she had them play the album over and over and just that one yeah and they would get sick she, she was it was funny because the doctors would get sick of it and they're like can we put something else on she's like if you put something else on i'm going to sleep yeah. and they're like okay that's like really touching it's, it's you know sobering I mean? because it is a scary thing but it, it is it's touching and, and and it makes us like it's it's rewarding you know what i mean Was there a breaking point for you guys this year when you thought, well, you know, this is actually where we're going to achieve what, you know, a lot of what we've actually set out to achieve with this record? Was there a moment, like, it, whether it was one show or one performance on television? We just got to play the, the VMAs in, in New York City. And I that saw was... that. Ladies and gentlemen, the three-time platinum sound of Lincoln Park. <laughs> Stage. I threw up like every day <laughs> for a week. Leading so, up to no, it. I swear to God, I'm not yeah. even joking. I, I have never ever been. I haven't been nervous in years. You know, since like the first time I got on stage <laughs> in high school, I haven't been nervous. And you know, it was like such an odd feeling for me all of a sudden to be extremely like racked with all these you know anticipation. And uh, I started finding myself getting like minor anxiety attacks. You know, I'd start shaking and then. I either want to pass for like out. Four minutes, you know, just I, for four minutes. I'd, I'd, sit, there and, you know, yeah, I'd sit there and all of a sudden I go, Bleh! and then just throw up. I mean, it was, it was I can't totally. Put it on this mic, man. This thing smells awful. Yeah, man. I can't even imagine what, what the guys from the executioners um, who played with us. Yeah, I know. I saw they it. don't, I mean, they don't, they didn't know us that well. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, w we had hung out a little bit and stuff, but when Chester was hovering over a trash can <laughs> in our dressing room, you know, Rob Swift was looking at me like, does he always do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, that worked really well. When you guys introduced them, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know that that was being built as a collaboration. And, um, yeah, you know... We wanted it to be like a, surprise. a surprise. It was, yeah. and I thought, well, how are they going to do this? You know, because you've got three of the greatest turntablists in the history of, of, of hip-hop music on stage. Wait, you know, you're not just going to give them eight bars and tell them to piss off, you know what I mean? <laughs> you've got to let them show. All right, people, please help us welcome to the stage the world famous executioners, everybody. It's gonna be a tough question for you, but I gotta ask one tough question, I guess. And the, whoever gets asked it first is gonna be in the worst position. Um, I want. I bench press 180. Okay, cool. What do you bench press? About 65. Press. I'm just joking. It wasn't the question <laughs> I found wrong with it, nonetheless. Um, no, uh, one moment that you can single out, and I know reflection is difficult when you're still on the road trying to make, make you know, trying to play your shows and you think about the next record and you don't want to stop and go, okay, what have we been doing for the last 12 months? But if you can pick one moment, I'm gonna go with you. One moment, you guys better start thinking that, that you can that you can really pull out this year that, that you thought, holy shit. Um, I, I was already thinking about it earlier in the interview, and it I think it was the the first show we did uh, in London. Uh, that was our first time. Kings College. Yeah, crazy. That was our first time playing outside of the U.S. Um, on that we played like three dates on that little European run that we had done, and uh, that was the first show that we had had that went over really well. That yeah. was outside the U.S. Um, I would have to say, uh, when we were in Melbourne, and uh, we were inside this, um, this like, small arena, mm -hmm. and uh, they broke the foundation of the building. The kids were just jumping so hard and having so much fun. They, they literally brought, brought the house down. Next time you have to raise the roof. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Mine's gonna sound. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come on, allow me one! Oh, allow me one! <laughs> Take my wife! <laughs> Mine's gonna sound slightly redundant, but it's also a show and it's also in London. It was the last time we were here with the Deftones. Yeah. We played uh, London Arena. I've caught up with you. A couple of you guys around that time, you looked exhausted. It was really, it was probably, that was the most exhausted I've been all year, I think. Mm. And I didn't even know how, I couldn't even, like, I had family out and I couldn't even talk to them. I was so tired. I didn't even know how we were going to play the show. And the show, for me, was, like, the, my favorite show of the whole year. Um, well, I'm not really much of a, I've never been much of a radio listener, but I think having our song get on the radio. One step mom, closer? Yeah, one mm. step closer. And that was just a cool thing to me because it, it felt like at that point like it had gone it had already gone way before way, way mm. further than i expected uh, a couple months ago doing festival shows we played the largest show we've ever played was it was for probably about 70 80 thousand people the wind was blowing my cymbals were you know blowing around and stuff and it was just like and i remember the sun was like kind of setting and coming through the clouds and there was just like people for as far as you could see we, we played the great show and we had a, had a great time well thanks very much guys it's been a pleasure Oh, don't let me down, man. Come on, don't let me down. Oh, I benched 260. Hey! <laughs> Thanks for your time. Hello, friends and lovers. Welcome to the Family Values Tour. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's time to go behind the scenes. Come on. What's up, you guys? You're chilling with Lincoln Park at the Family Values Tour. And remember, kids, to fasten your seatbelts and wear your safety helmets and goggles for the wackiest ride of your life. This is where the magic happens. This is our, uh, our studio bus. It's just in our nature that we have a lot of fun when we write music, and so it's, it's cool to have that outlet here to, to be able to take a break from what's going on outside on the tour. Sean here at the FOH, which is the code term for front of house. This is where the psychopaths get crazy, man. We're also giving all the kids safety belts. Okay, MTV, we've had enough of you heckling us. We're going to go. We're going to leave a good buddy for the show.